Hey guys, this is a short tour of my old man's pride and joy, his blacked out Mercedes Sprinter van. Next week, he plans to retire and join the traveling community by spending his time cruising Australia and taking in just what this country's all about. Let's get into Shrimpy's first ever van tour. Yep. You see it here first, folks. <laughs> we'll start with the outside, do a quick rip round, and then work our way through the inside. Let's do it. Let's do it. So the branding, spirit of adventure. This signifies the sunrise and the sunsets. Um, the mountains, Tasmania, uh, down in the Alpine regions of uh, New South Wales and Victoria. The beautiful forests. Um, I love boreal forests. Um, and here, the lake and all the directions of the compass, all po points north, south, east and west. Um, and little bird flying away and two little white birds at the top. You never know on this journey who I'm going to meet. And the spirit of adventure, that's what's in my heart. That's the passion. Um, but we're going to look at the technical aspects. But uh, I always want to remember that, um, you know, that's where my heart is on the road. And the spirit's really important. All right, um, standard gas containers here, um, two 4.5 kilogram bottles. One can be pulled out and used for a night light on a stem. The other one's plugged in for the hot water system and also gas for cooking. Um, so pretty standard. All right, the ladder. Now, this is interesting. I found this on YouTube. Comes from Prime Design in Minnesota. You can't buy them in Australia. Um, I had a hell of a job getting this put on a sea container in the mid of the COVID crisis um, and transported here to, to, to where I live in Denmark. Um, it conforms to the side of the van. Um, you don't have to bolt through, it clips top and bottom. I reckon it's the best um, ladder in the market. Four by four. When I ticked the boxes with Mercedes, I went for double wheels, I went for long wheelbase, I went for high roof, and I went for four wheel drive. So if I'm going up a slippery road, Tasmania or in the Alpine country, just gives me that extra grip. Um, so much more traction, more rubber on the road, really. I suppose that's what I figured. All right, this is uh, the driver's side. I went for an outside chair. Why? Because I didn't want a whole area devoted to a space in the van for having a shower that I might only use for three or four minutes. I can always shower here with my old man budgie smugglers. All right, outside in the beautiful sun. All right, open the back door. You've seen the ladder. Now the ladder, you thought it was a ladder, but it's actually the most expensive towel rail in the world. I put my towel here and of course I can put my hair products. You can see I need plenty of hair product um, up on here and have a great little shower. That's a big call. I'm sure there's some people with some pretty expensive towel rails out there. <laughs> Quite possibly. It's my water tank. I have 240 litres of water, so I can be completely off grid on two tanks by the side of the vehicle, um, all fed by an electric pure uh, water pump. This is the back of the hot water system, um, and this is the ventilator for a black, of course, Italian fridge. All right, um, seeing as this Australia and we fairly frequently encounter large kangaroos, camels even. Um, I've got an ARB uh, polyethylene smart bar on the front. Um, this is insurance because I've got a very powerful 519 CDI engine here, which really will push my vehicle along, but I don't want the front of the vehicle compromised by an inadequate um, safety system. All right, top of the van, there are seven fittings here. You have a Dometic um, aircon system, uh, which only operates when I'm in a caravan park and plugged into shore power. A 180 um, amp hour solar panel, and there's another one as well. Um, so it makes 320 altogether. So plenty of off-grid um, off power. I've got two um, vents to allow a wind tunnel effect inside so that air can flow through and keep me cool when I'm traveling. There's a uh, vent system for uh, cooking smells, plenty going on in the roof. I get up here occasionally just to clean it. That's what the ladder's for. Okay, the back of the van inside. What you can see here is my bike. So the concept of not having a shower inside um, allowed me the space for 
the bike rack. Um, this was fitted by uh, a manufacturer and thanks to Impulse Cycles in Albany for that. All right, this is on a pull-out slide. Um, it's a standard bike, nothing flash, guys, but it gets me around. I can do stuff on it and allows me when I camp out to go to, um, you know, nice places off, uh, off the beaten track. So that slides in and out. I've got all my camping stuff on the inside, everything that I'll need. So um, once you've had a um, hard day out cycling, the idea here is that I can wash it, spray it, everything will drain through, dry it in the sun, oil and grease it, of course, always look after the bike, um, and then push it back into its little cubby hole and secure it in position. Right, moving on, the other door. Okay, here you go. Typical me. I've even got my broom ready to go because there'll be a lot of sand in my vehicle, always sweeping that out. Got my wet water jackets, I've got my hiking boots filter to make sure that when I get water that no um, horrible things are going to be in it. Um, that'll filter out any nasties. Um, that's a very important, important piece of kit. So this is a Fiamma FATS. So it's simply a, a swivel wind out warning. All right, so just very simply turn on this and she comes down. Um, and then you put the extendable legs out uh, to support it and peg it down in windy conditions as well. All right, the, uh, the big reveal, the inside. Here we go. My concept here was to have soft furnishings, so I've used nice light pine, uh, Australian acacia wood fittings. So my cooking area, let's start with that, food. Um, kitchen preparation area with a little window to see anybody approaching. I've got my spice rack. I have um, staples up here, such as rice and pastas, very, very close to where I'm gonna be cutting and preparing my vegetables. And then if I turn around to this side, this is where I'm going to cook. Now, this is a Thetford um, two burner stove and I didn't want it to look like a camping stove. I wanted it to be something that looks as if it's straight out of a, a plush house. I have here a fold up table, which um, has a little support underneath here. So I have the passenger seat, which turns around and then I can eat um, basically looking at the beautiful view. Uh, sink here with a specially sourced tap. This is the Alvarin tap and I got this from Ikea. It just fell in love with it together with this particular stainless steel sink. Also here is a cooking smells vent uh, which goes up onto the roof. So whilst I'm cooking, anything can go up there. Also, it dissipates heat as well. So, kitchen drawers. So you press in to lock, press it and it pops out again. There's lots on the market. So in here, I've got all the utensils that I need including a lot of wooden utensils so that um, I don't scrape my pans. Underneath here, I'm gonna have pots and pans. Um, big thing here is always have plastic or perspex um, cups. So this is an Italian fridge. Um, I think it's a Vitor Viratigno, if you're Italian, whatever that means. Um, it's got a ice area, very important for those gin and tonics at uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. Also, here, I've got a little pantry, which actually hasn't been filled with anything yet, and a beautiful chopping board, which I made in my workshop for chopping the veggies. So, the acacia, the jarra, this is actually a little piece of mango wood, which has been fashioned into a chopping board. All these things are very important to me. As a backup to the um, gas stove system, I have um, a small microwave. All right, so here I can, um, I can eat and just look at the view, watch the television. This is enough for me. I also have an outside table underneath an awning, but at the moment, this is my inside eating area. This is my, what I call my study nook. So this area here, you see I've got little stationary cupboards. I've got my notice board with a very um, inspirational quote from Steve Jobs. I look at that every day and it reminds me of why I'm traveling, who I am and what's most important. You're asking where I sit down, well, the bed actually pulls out um, into the sofa, becomes a king size single, and I can sit on the edge here and do my laptop work, read books, do my study, and get inspired by Steve Jobs. All right, one feature that I thought was important for the roof was having two vents, one at the front and one at the rear of the van, so that air can be 
sucked in and there's a fan there and flow through the vehicle and then can go out through here. So kind of like a wind tunnel effect is something I picked up on someone else's YouTube blog. Um, also there is a fly screen here and also you've got a blackout. So there's three components to every vent if you like. Flying onto the window, the window is a standard Dometic um, caravan windows, black on the outside of course, white on the inside. So you open the windows quite easily. Everyone's probably very familiar with these. All right, with a system so it locks off. Also you've got the fly screen and then at night you can bring this down and have complete uh, blackout privacy. Um, and here you've got a Dometic Ibis 4 um, aircon system that runs off 240 volts short power. Uh, and that's actually pretty powerful. Uh, too powerful to use off the inverter batteries, but great if you're in a caravan park. The bed area and the, the day lounge area. Two things here. Uh, this actually pulls out into a king size single. Underneath here, of course, are uh, two uh, deep cell batteries to power the internal electrics of the, the van. And I've just decorated with little bits that would give me pleasure. The first ever um, pine bowl that I turned on a lathe and my first ever Jarrah bowl, um, a few candles. And this is a very nice piece of Aboriginal art from far north tropical Queensland called Barramundi Dream that I fell in love with many years ago and I couldn't bear to part with it. So that adorns my wall. All right, here we've got um, plug-in area. Uh, this is for uh, 12 volt, um, obviously uh, cable for recharging mobile phone. I've got two sets of um, inlets here, or outlets. This is from the inverter, so in other words, that's coming off the two batteries uh, underneath the, the bed area. Yeah, this pulls out into a king size single, um, and literally to about here, so I'm sitting on the edge of this comfortable bed here, whilst I work um, in my study nook here. So it all links in very nicely. Underneath here, I've even got um, my shirt all lined up on hangers, um, and in here, plenty of storage area for bits and pieces. There's no house to come back to. This is it. Everything is in here. Winter, summer, expedition kit, all yeah. on the road with you at it, all times. It, this is uh, this is me. And you were talking about storage and how it's important to you. You can kind of tell as we move back out of the van just how much storage there is here. The back of the van is all storage, all right? And even the cabinets have been designed to be certain depths, heights, widths, etc., for certain um, things. Yes, it is lightweight, but it's really well made. Sturdy um, shelves that don't rattle, because that's very important when you hit corrugations. I designed this in three sections. So you've got the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer. All right, um, obviously the top layer are things that are easily accessible. So this is my, my winter section with towels and um, warm jackets and sweaters and scarves and things like that. All right, middle section is for things that I'm gonna use on a daily basis. So basically all my clothes on three shelves. Down the bottom are things that I only use occasionally. So because this is over one of the big wheel arches, and I have double wheels at the back. This one has got shoes in it, all right? So, you know, not used every day, or if I do, I only use one or two items from that section. Okay, um, up here at the moment, I actually have a guitar and a ukulele. Um, so they're quite large items and they're in their own travel cases. Um, in these two sections here, I've literally got um, bedding. So I've got a doona and I've got pillows and blankets and, and bits and pieces. Um, because that's close to where I need it to fit out the bed at night. Over here, this is the fun cupboard. In here, I've got um, hiking boots, I've got diving gear, I've got camping gear, I've got tents, I've got toolkits, I've got rucksacks. I've got everything that I will need for an adventurous life on the road. Okay, so this is where the captain sits. Tell us about the uh, captain's chair and a bit about the vehicle. Okay, um, I wanted this vehicle to be pretty maintenance free and buying a brand new Mercedes was kind of important for me because I've been through those years of old vans that break down. Um, I'm going to really look after it. And these seats, oh, they're so comfortable. The lumbar support, the electronic control. This is a really important tip from Old Shrimpy. Always buy a vehicle with lots of coffee cups. Really important. There's actually eight in this vehicle. It absolutely is amazing. You've got two here. 
you've got two here, you've got another one here, you've got another one where? That makes six and you've got two on either doors. So there you are, eight coffee cups within coffee grabbing distance. So, so there's two seats and eight coffee cups. Absolutely, I just thought that was the best sales feature. I said, how many coffee cups has, has it got? And when he told me eight, I said, right, I'll have it, but I'll have it in black. So Sophie and I wish you many happy adventures in your retirement, Dad. And if you see this crazy old man on the road, feel free to say good day. He's always keen for a yarn and to talk about the spirit of adventure. Love you, Dad.